Hodographs are a handy way to visualize wind shear. Grab a cup of coffee, fire up an empty Jupiter notebook, and join me in making one on this week's MetPie Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer at Unidata. On this week's MetPie Monday, we're going to look at how to make a basic hodograph, which is a really handy way to visualize wind shear with height based on sounding data. It's pretty much a polar plot where we draw each individual wind vector starting at the origin and then as a vector and connect the tips of those vectors to make the trace that we see on the hodograph. Okay, so first we're going to need to do our imports. So from date time, import date time so we can specify what time we want to do our sounding at. I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. I'm going to go ahead and import metpy calculations just to help illustrate some things here. So metpy.calc as mpcalc. Then from metpy.plots, we're going to import the hodograph class. And for metpy.units, we need to import the unit registry. And then finally, we need to get our actual upper air data, which I'm going to use siphon for. So from siphon.simpleWebService.wyoming, remember tab completion here is helpful. I'm going to import Wyoming upper air. Now I'm going to use the matplotlib inline magic. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is specify when we want our sounding data from. So in this case, I'm going to say May 4th, 1999, year, month, day. And since I'm not specifying an hour here, that's going to default to 0z because it's going to fill in for 0 hour, 0 minute, 0 second. Then I'm going to make a variable for my station. O-U-N for Norman, Oklahoma. Then we'll get our upper air data, assign it the data frame variable df here. So Wyoming upper air, request data, date and station. Then we'll look at what data are in there. So df.columns. You'll notice I'm using siphon 0.7, which was recently released. So I've got a few more things than we used to get. For example, I have the station number, the latitude, longitude, elevation of the station, uh, as well as things like the time of the sounding actually in the data frame now. So that's handy. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is pull out the pressure, the heights, the U wind, and the V wind from our data. And you'll remember how to do this from our sounding data acquisition tutorial several weeks ago. But it's going to look like pressure equals, and we're going to get the data frame column pressure, get the values from that, and multiply it by the proper units. We do have some plans to make this easier in the future with a helper, but that will be in the next release of MetPy. So now we'll do the same thing for U-Wind, V-Wind, and Heights. Okay, so to help me make sure that I understand what kind of output I expect, I'm going to quickly use a function from metpy.calc to get the wind direction so that I know that the hodograph that I'm seeing is what I expect to see here. It also helps you get a little bit of an intuitive sense of what the hodograph is showing if you're not used to looking at hodographs. So I'm going to print mpcalc.getwindder. Remember if we do shift tab, that will show us what we expect. So uwind and vwind. So there we see that we're getting things from uh, southerly direction, 
going more towards the west here. And at the very top, there's a NAND value, hence why we got this warning. Okay, so the first thing we need to do now to make our plot is we'll make a figure. So plot.figure. I'm going to make my figure 6 by 6. I'm going to create an axis on that. So fig.add subplot, one row, one column, first panel. Now I'm going to actually create the hodograph. I'm going to give the hodograph the handle h. So h equals hodograph. And if we shift tab, it'll show you what it expects. So ax and a component range. So we're going to give it our axis. And then for component range, in this case, I'm going to specify 60. It defaults to 80, but this will give us uh, a little bit better utilization of the canvas for this particular sounding. Now, if I run that, you see that I don't get anything unusual looking right now. It just looks like a normal XY plot in matplotlib, but you'll notice our bounds have been set from minus 60 to 60. So the next step to that is going to be to actually plot some data. So h dot plot, much like you would a line plot, but now I specify u end, v end, and I'm going to specify a line width of five just to make the line a little bit more bold and easy to see, and then redisplay the figure. So now you see we have our hodograph, and our axes have also been labeled with the units of the winds thanks to some of Matplotlib's unit handling capability. This still isn't that useful to look at yet. We really need some grid lines, some fiducials to help us out here. So h dot add grid increment equals, in this case, I'm going to increment every 10 knots and redisplay the figure. Now we're getting somewhere. So here's our origin, u wind and v wind. And remember, we were looking at winds from the south that were then veering more towards the west. So on this plot, a southerly wind would have U and V components that are positive. So we would expect that to be in this direction. So this is actually south, and this is actually north, but we're drawing these as vectors, remember, not as wind barbs. So this would be a wind out of the west blowing to the east, so it would plot in a more easterly direction on our hodograph here. Another thing that you could do if you wanted to add some emphasis to certain range rings, maybe have major and minor looking range rings, would be to add another grid on top of this. So for example, I'm going to h.add grid again. In this case, I'm going to give an increment of 20. And I'm going to specify a color, something that'll really stand out to make it obvious what's going on here. So tab orange. And then a line style of a dash, which is a solid. Now when we look at this figure, we see that every 20 knots we have a solid orange line, and then every 10 we have the dashed lines. So this helps say, okay, 20, 40, 60, and so on. One last tip with respect to hodographs for this week, which is what if I only want to plot part of the hodograph? I don't care about what's going on in the upper levels. I only want to know, let's say, zero to four kilometer data. Well, we can use MetPy's get layer function to help us out with this. So if we look at mpcalc.getLayer and shift tab, you'll see that it takes a pressure array and then the arrays that we wish to have subset somehow. And then in this case, if we expand the documentation a little bit here, we can see that we specify either a bottom or a depth and some other options in here. So I'm going to go ahead and say pressure four kilometers, U wind up to four kilometers, V wind up to four kilometers. Now I'm going to say calc .get layer. Remember our first argument was pressure and then the things that we want to subset. So our original arrays were U wind and V wind. I have height data from the sounding, so I'm going to specify that. If you don't, a standard atmosphere will be used. And then our depth, I want 4 times unit dot kilometers. 
And let's go ahead and wrap that here so it displays a little better. So what this is going to do is take four kilometers from our height values. Now that subset has run. So if we take the same idea, so I'm going to make a new figure instead of plotting on top of the same figure that we already have. So fig dot plot figure. Fig size is six six, and the rest of this is going to be the exact same as we have above. So if we run this, we now see that we only have a subset. So we don't have any of this piece over here. We just have the data up to four kilometers. I hope that you found this useful. Next week, we'll continue exploring ways to enhance our hodograph by coloring the line that is drawn based on variables. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.